The Heisey Volcanic Field is a remarkable geological feature located in eastern Idaho and is part of the vast Yellowstone Snake River Plain volcanic system. This field is distinguished by its history of intense and explosive volcanic activity, characterized by a series of major eruptions that have occurred over the last several million years. These eruptions have left behind a landscape dotted with large calderas, which are essentially massive craters formed by the collapse of land following major volcanic activity. These calderas have reshaped the original mountainous topography here and have replaced it with a flattened depressed land, perfect for agriculture and habitation in the eyes of humans until, you know, the place erupts. But in this video we're going to take a look at the Heisey Volcanic Field and the associated supervolcanic eruptions that occurred here. We have four major eruptions that occurred between 6.6 .6 to 4.5 million years ago, and these eruptions obviously predated the more recent Yellowstone ones as the North American landmass steadily travels west over the volcanic hotspot that's responsible for these cataclysmic eruptions evermore. Make sure to click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified of new releases in the series as we follow the Yellowstone hotspot back in time, covering every major eruption that we know of as we go. The Yellowstone hotspot has been releasing supervolcanic scale eruptions on the North American landmass for well over 16 million years. Dozens of calderas exist as a result of this. Many of them remain hidden and others remain obscured by proceeding eruptions. Trying to wrap your head around the complexity of the Yellowstone hotspot is difficult but worth it as it tells a tale of destruction and rebirth and understanding these processes is necessary for a multitude of reasons from mineral exploration to the preparation for potential future disasters. In our last two episodes in this series we covered the two most recent major caldera forming eruptions in Yellowstone National Park. The link to both of those videos is in the description. Today we move a little southwest of that. Idaho's Sugar City lies in the center of the major caldera here. Congrats guys, you named one of the most disastrous areas in your country after one of the sweetest things known to man. You guys sure love that fire and brimstone, hey? But I can see why. These beautiful plains would have been eye candy to settlers here, a reprieve from the mountains to the north and south. Now we begin our story with the spectacular Blacktail Tuff eruption, which occurred around 6.6 .6 million years ago. This was an event of colossal proportions, expelling approximately 1200 cubic kilometers or 288 cubic miles of volcanic ash and material. This volume is an astounding testament to the power of the Yellowstone hotspot's geothermal energy. It's enough to cover an area equivalent to the state of Rhode Island with a layer of ash nearly 10 meters or 33 feet thick. The eruption's force was such that it led to the creation of a vast caldera, a geological scar that speaks to the immense upheaval of the time. Although exact dimensions of this caldera are not specified, and by the way, get used to this, I'll provide a reason for why this is the case later on, its inclusion in the high sea volcanic field is a significant part of the region's volcanic narrative. Not long after, the Walcott Tuff eruption marked another significant event in the volcanic history of the area. Approximately 6.1 million years ago, this eruption released around 750 cubic kilometers or 180 cubic miles of tephra. The Walcott Tuff eruption contributed to a major transformation of the landscape, creating yet another caldera within the high sea volcanic field. The dimensions of this caldera, while not precisely known, are integrated into the culminative area of this geologically rich field. This may seem like a tiny amount compared to the 1200 cubic kilometers released by the previous eruption, but just remember that Mount Tambora's 1815 eruption altered the climate of the entire planet and created widespread pandemonium and it only released 100 cubic kilometers or 24 cubic miles worth of tephra. The link to the video we made on that is also down in the description by the way. The high sea volcanic field's story progressed with the eruption of the Conant Creek Tuff, dated at approximately 5.5 million years ago. This eruption, with a lesser volume of roughly 300 cubic kilometers or 72 cubic miles of tephra, marked yet another chapter in the region's geological development. The eruption forged a new caldera, further altering the fabric of the area's physical geography. Unsurprisingly, the dimensions of the Conant Creek caldera remain elusive. Still, its presence is an integral part of the high sea volcanic field's puzzle. The youngest and most explosive chapter in this volcanic saga is the eruption of the Kilgore Tuff, which took place around 4.5 million years ago. And this is why all of the dimensions of the three prior eruptions remain unknown. It blew the earth asunder and obscured all the former calderas as a result. 
This event was unparalleled in its magnitude within the region, as it unleashed a mind-boggling 1800 cubic kilometers or 432 cubic miles of volcanic material. The resulting Kilgore caldera stretches an impressive 80 kilometers or 50 miles long, a clear indicator of the eruption's power and unbelievable scale. It's this dramatic size that obscured these calderas from the eyes of scientists for the longest period of time. It's truly incredible to think that only 100 years ago, these types of massive eruptions were thought to be impossible. And thus, the calderas of the Heisei volcanic field are not mere geological formations, they are archives of environmental change. Each eruption has had profound implications for the local ecosystem and climate, with the deposition of volcanic material influencing soil composition, vegetative growth, mineral deposition and water systems. These geological events have altered habitats and the distribution of species, affecting the course of biological and mineral evolution in the region. Furthermore, the Heisei volcanic field serves as a natural laboratory for volcanologists and geologists. By studying the layers of tephra, the structure of the calderas and the distribution of volcanic rock, scientists can gain insights into the mechanisms of caldera formation, the dynamics of super eruptions, and the movement of tectonic plates. This field is also critical for understanding the potential future activity of the Yellowstone hotspot, as it provides a geological precedent for what might occur if another such event were to transpire. Today, the high sea volcanic field is not only a point of scientific interest, but also a place of natural beauty and wonder. It offers a unique opportunity for education and exploration, where visitors can gaze upon the immense calderas and imagine the earth-shattering eruptions that occurred millions of years ago. It's a place where one can reflect on the dynamic processes that have shaped, and that continue to shape, our planet's ever-changing face. Thanks for watching.